We traveled from Island Park, Idaho, down through Jackson, Wyoming, up to a boondocking spot just outside of the Grand Tetons. We did and saw a lot while we were there, so enjoy the video. We're Dave and Karen from Watts on Wheels, and we sold our sticks and bricks to RV full-time now that we are retired. We travel with our heavy-duty truck Leroy, our two k motorcycles, our DRV Dixie, and our smart car Zippy. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell to be notified when we post a new video. We were only six and a half miles from the Moran entrance into Grand Teton National Park. But first, I have to show you some of the scenery we saw on the way there. Absolutely gorgeous. About nine miles before we got to our destination, we had a blowout on a two-lane highway with no shoulder. If you hadn't seen that video, check out the link in the description below or at the end of the video. Red Creek. Continue on Forest Road 30290 for one and a half. How many miles? One and a half. First we tried parking over here on the left hand side, but we found that it was really unlevel. So we ended up over here by the entrance. Perfect spot for us. The iconic topography which makes the park so appealing to so many was created by a series of seismic disasters. During each major quake, Jackson Hole dropped downward and the Teton Range rose upward. What this did was to increase the vertical distance between the valley and the mountains which was responsible for the stunning topography as after 13 million years of earthquakes, the tallest peak towers almost 7,000 feet above the valley floor. The name Teton is derived from the French word Tetons, which means breasts in English, but it was named by French trappers and explorers who were mapping the area in the late 1700s who were inspired by the shape of the mountains and a vivid imagination. The first president to visit the park did so long before it actually became a national park. America's 21st President Chester Allen Arthur traversed the region in 1883 when it was a wilderness without roads. Grand Teton National Park has its own airport. 
The Jackson Hole Airport, established in the 1930s, is the only commercial airport in the United States located entirely inside a national park. Among the wildlife you can see at the park are grizzly and black bears, along with moose, bison, elk, and prohorn. We actually saw some pronghorns. The pronghorn is the fastest land mammal in the Western Hemisphere and are capable of reaching speeds up to 70 miles per hour. This park features some of the oldest rocks found on the planet. A 2.7 billion year old metamorphic rock called Gneiss, G-N-E-I-S-S, -S, makes up much of the Teton Range. We did have the um, ranger stop by and knock on our door asked us where we were from and how many days we were going to be there because there was a five-day limit and we already knew that and so I think he just wanted to make sure we knew that. There is a sign that you'll see to turn down the appropriate road for boondocking where we were at and this is the view at the end of that road at the Tetons. If you're going to go to the Grand Tetons, recommend that you go to nps.gov website and check out the information you can find on the Grand Tetons in there. You'll find basic information, park roads, construction delays, wildlife safety, campgrounds, lodging, and also an app you can download and more. They have alerts that you can look on in here, which generally have information about weather or road conditions. And then they have maps that you can click on and you can see the areas you'd like to visit. And again, they'll have information regarding construction and parking. Click on the fees and you can purchase your tickets there that range from $20 to $35, unless you have America the Beautiful Pass and then it's free. You go to the map section, you can click on their cartology link and you'll see that they have multiple maps to choose from. This is the first one which shows pretty much everything that you would need. And you can print this out as a JPEG or PDF or Acrobat. And you can see here, it shows you where the restrooms are, all the stops, places that you want to go. You can see here the entrance from Moran where we came in. It was still a two and a half miles drive to get to our first stop at Oxbow Bend Turnout. Taking a little path down here. Seems like we're all alone. This is at Oxbow Bend in the north end. There's a website called morethanjustparks.com. It provides a lot of information about different national parks. So I suggest you check out their website to get more information on any of the national parks. Grand Teton National Park is a beautiful and wrecked park located in Wyoming in the United States and it covers over 310,000 acres of land and is home to the Teton Range, a group of towering jagged peaks that rise dramatically from the surrounding plains. The park is located in the Rocky Mountains and features a diverse landscape including forests of pine and spruce trees, alpine meadows, and crystal clear streams and lakes. And you're going to see that in this video. We're at the top of the summit. That looks like a challenging golf course. <laughs> Toboggan run. There are many ways to explore and enjoy Grand Teton National Park as you can take a scenic drive along the park's roads, go hiking or biking on many of the trails, take a boat tour on one of the park's lakes, or even go horseback riding. There are also several historic lodges and chalets located within the park. We're trying to get into this Jenny Lake viewing area, which is supposed to be one of the best areas and we got a big bus in the way 
No, there's a culprit. Somebody decided to park the car in a no parking area and the bus can't get through. Look, son. Here we are at Jenny Lake Overlook. This is awesome. This is it. Amazing. You said it didn't get any better. You lie. <laughs> This is gorgeous. I can't get over it. You didn't bring a selfie. Here's the trail at Jenny Lake. Kind of makes you want to go down and take a dip, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. That water is super clear. Park boundaries include approximately 310,000 acres or 485 square miles. Grand Teton National Park hosts 3 to 4 million visitors each year. The highest point of the Teton Range is 13,775 feet and is the second highest peak in Wyoming after Gannett Peak. The lowest elevation is at Fish Creek at the south boundary at 6,320 feet. Grand Teton National Park was established in 1929. Jackson Hole National Monument was created in 1943. The two units were combined to become the present Grand Teton National Park in 1950. The aerial tram runs 12 minutes skyward, 4,139 vertical feet. The summit offers staggering 360 degree views of the Tetons, Jackson Hole Valley, and surrounding mountain ranges. The Top of the World provides amazing access to a plethora of great hiking, running trails, and climbing. Yo, where else would you guys exit on the south side? When we got on, it was about 80. This is absolutely incredible. There are many amazing hikes in Jackson Hole, and the tram will give you access directly into the incredible hiking areas in the National Forest and Grand Teton National Park. We went to the RPK3 restaurant next to the tram. It was very expensive and the service was slow and there was hardly anybody there. You may not expect it in a small Wyoming town so close to Jackson Hole, the Grand Tetons and Yellowstone National Park, but the National Museum of Military Vehicles is the nation's premier world-class military history museum located in Dubois, Wyoming. We strongly recommend you add it to your trip if you're visiting these parks. The drive to the National Museum of Military Vehicle is beautiful too. Now I'm not a history buff or usually interested in museums of this type, but since Dave is, I went and I was totally blown away. This museum is absolutely fantastic. 
Du Bois, Wyoming is home of the Smithsonian Level Military Museum, and would you believe it's privately owned? The privately funded 160,000 square foot, $100 million museum was founded by Dan and Cynthia Starks. Dan Starks is a former attorney and former CEO of St. Jude Medical. In 2012, Dan Starks, the founder of the museum, bought a tank. It was the start of something big. Since then, he's acquired over 500 authentic tanks, jeeps, trucks, motorcycles, landing crafts, and other military vehicles. It's now the world's largest collection of military vehicles outside the armed forces themselves. Also, the museum presents a historical significant major firearms collection that includes the fully authenticated musket that fired the first shot in the Revolutionary War Battle of Bunker Hill. The Starks are dedicated to honoring the service and sacrifice of veterans and their families and active duty servicemen and women. They tell their stories in three major galleries through multiple exhibits with a current focus on World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. Many of the tours are narrated by Dan Starks himself. While we were there, we listened to him talk about the Korean War. I tell you what, I wish my teachers in school were as good and as interesting as him. For more information, check out their website at nmmv.org. Is this white line? This is an imaginary line. It's a line of latitude. This is what people are referring to when they talk about the 38th parallel. The line's right next door to the South Korean capital city of Seoul. It's the port of Incheon. Uh, everybody except MacArthur, all of the senior military leadership except MacArthur, thinks this is a bad idea. The ladders would have been slaughtered, but there wasn't much of a defense. This was a complete surprise to the North Koreans. So that's that's the first uh, good good image to show the, some of the geographic uh, challenges. Second image, this is uh, the most famous photograph here. You see an American climbing up over the ladder, one of the first Americans to go over that seawall. Uh, from this small location, a better world they even have movies on the floor. We are in the historic downtown of Du Bois. I think it's called Du Bois. Du Bois. Neat little town. We're going to go into the Cowboy Cafe. We were told that the Cowboy Cafe had the best homemade pies. So we stopped in and got a piece of blueberry pie and a piece of strawberry apple pie. Oh my God, best pie ever. Gotta stop by. What you gonna do with all that pie? I'm gonna put it in my pie hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is so good. Whoa. Excellent, homemade. Here, I'll give you my crust and you can put it in your crust hole. Damn right. Hope you enjoyed the video with the local attraction the tips, the little historical information, and the museum. Please give us a thumbs up. We appreciate your comments, too. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do and share the video. It helps our channel. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. We'd love to hear from you in the comments below, even if it's just to say hi. Don't forget to subscribe.